<laughs> Born in Trouble. That's right. Episode 12. I'm your host, John X. The title of this episode is Cinco D Maybe. That's right. Because maybe you're still alive after Cinco de Mayo. But maybe we're here, we're here to welcome. <laughs> we're here to welcome. If you're listening to this get to the show, but who knows how you'll feel at the end of it. So anyway, but I'll, if they right, if they ahead. may be alive, if mm-hmm. they may be alive, are, are, who are we talking to? If they may be alive, Grant Lancaster. <laughs> we're talking <laughs> to Grant Lancaster. Apparently, we're crossing dimensions here, Grant. This right. isn't just, this yeah, isn't yeah. just for those yeah, of us on this earthly plane. It's- and yeah, Mr. Yeah, Robert we're on, we're Brooks. On plane. Yes. And Mr. Robert Brooks was speaking to him. And of course, from Los Angeles, California, Mr. Gene Hopkins. Side. Yes, side. I figure since we can, I just figure we could since we can never get a clean intro, I might as well just let you guys like kind of get started and like, you know, kind of introduce yourself. So that's what we did. Now that's done. Introductions are over. So by the way, if you're listening to this at home, I expect a contentious podcast today. If you could see our group text messages for the past two or three days, you'd understand why I don't start these things. I just broadcast them for the world to see. And that's why we're born in trouble. Right? Right. Born in trouble. Exactly. Hopefully yes. they're alive and listening. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully so. Hopefully, if they're, so. if they're dead and listening, we don't we don't really care about them. But yeah, well, so. you don't. I mean, that could be the next level of Nielsen rating. You know, <laughs> aerial plane getting the numbers off. Right, of the people who are looking back yeah, at we're, what their friends and, and relatives were doing. Like we could be popular yeah, with that group. Lord knows they'll try anything actually. else. For, Lord knows they'll try anything else for ratings. So it is what it is. Gentlemen, how was your week? How was your Cinco de Mayo? By the way, I, the the problem with that is that I wanted to do a broadcast for Cinco de Mayo and it just didn't work out for different reasons for when different days. Um, I'm not a big tequila guy anymore, you know, but I had a lot of jokes that I wanted to tell about the border wall and Mexicans sneaking across the border. And hopefully by now it's the day that, the day after. Hopefully you got your um, – Mexican friend out of the house before your husband came home last night. <laughs> you know, especially if you voted for Trump, right? Right. Tequila will make you do things. It used to be one of those understood universal things. Don't do the worm. Don't drink tequila. Hey, leave the worm. Leave the worm alone. Yo, let, you know let, the first- let them fuck with the worm. Hey, so so we we grew up stealing moonshine, you know, from my my father's storage or whatever. But I didn't know anything about alcohol. And nothing, nothing. I got in the army, and that's the first time I saw tequila with a worm at the bottom. And uh, this cool cat from San Francisco, I, I forget his name, swallowed the worm and everything else. This is what I remember. Yes. Oh, that that motherfucker was members. gone. That's that right. motherfucker was gone. That's I'm right. talking about flopping all over the place, sweating in this and the puking everywhere and this and that. That was my first exposure to uh, the worm at the bottom of the tequila. And I was like, damn, this dude is going hard. Well, man. obviously you were exposed to the worst at that time. Um, you mentioned two <laughs> things. See, hey, listen, don't, 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 don't humor me with laughter. Okay. Don't humor me with that. Yeah. It's just what? What? He's just he's, what? just he's just fulfilling his prophecy of a contention. Right. Right. <laughs> right. He's gonna make it so. You know, he, right. he, he's not gonna be yeah, wrong. Right. That's right. A prophecy ain't shit without action. Go ahead. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> all I remember about all I remember about moonshine was it made some it made a hell of a cough medicine with some rock candy and some lemon because my mother was from Norfolk, Virginia. And that's what we that's what we took in the summertime. So, so how was y'all's week, man? That, y'all been paying attention isn't that to lean? huh? Is that isn't that what lean is? Is that what lean is? No, no man, lean no. is cough syrup. Cough syrup. Me- oh, okay. Cough yeah. syrup and like in some type of pills, isn't it? No, just cough no. syrup. Just cough syrup. And, and, you uh, sir have just dated yourself. Mixed with sprite. <laughs> 
uh, you know, uh, yo, man, they had a whole racket on that shit. Man, I know people that used to go. <laughs> I don't even go ahead, man. I'm going to fucking listen, incriminate myself. Everybody knows what Lean does to you because Tariq, Tariq is just a terrible person. <laughs> Tariq he's better back. now. He's better now. He's no longer. Yeah, he's, he's better now. Yeah, he's no longer on the yeah, Power so, is a whackness, man, compared so, to uh, Snowfall. So, fellas, have y'all, you know, paid attention to anything that's going on this week? There's anything that's on your mind that you want to get into before I crack it up? I know, Grant, you had a title for the show. What was it? Cinco de what? Uh, it was Seis de Mayo. Seis de Mayo. Seis de Mayo. Seis de yeah, Mayo. Seis de Mayo. What does that mean? Does that mean no Cinco de Mayo or? No, no that, that means the 6th, the 6th of May. Of- Oh, the 6th of Come May. Come on. The 6th of May, sir. Oh, that's, that's very good. You live in Brentwood, sir. Your Spanish is not that terrible. I don't need oh, Spanish. Man. I don't need Spanish in Brentwood. I just look at people and grunt. <laughs> Simpler that way. <laughs> Simpler that way. Right. What, you don't, right. you don't speak English? I don't speak Spanish? We're at an impasse. I point. So um, I, I did. I did have something that I that I did want to uh, kind of touch on. Sure. Um, this legislation that's been passed for uh, Asians, the Asian hate shit. Mm. Um, I saw that. Yeah, I I, I just want to because I'm not I'm I'm kind of torn about Barack. I love him because he's a black dude, but as a president, I say fuck him. Um, and I say that because he ain't do shit for black people. And the narrative was always, well, he can't do anything for black people specifically because he's the president of America. Right. But, you know, for a few years later, the president passes some shit that's strictly for Asians. Well, let me tell I you. Mean, how to, let me tell you oh, one big difference oh, oh. between. Let me give you one big difference with that. And I peeped that, too. Um First of all, what you have along with that bill is you have a $225 million contribution from the Asian community um, that came from different sources as well as partially backed by the owner of the Nets, Joe Zai. Um, Mm -hmm. And we don't have, when we're looking to push these legislations through, there's not a lobby that's going to come up there with $225 million to push through some legislation because history tells us that even that $225 million isn't enough, that you probably have to triple or quadruple that in order to get that type of attention that the Asian community got just from that one thing. And that's it. And it's very. Uh, but I think it's part of it is the moment, too. I mean, if, you know, this same level of violence against the Asian American community happens 25 years ago. I think it just, it's whatever. It's just pushed away and it doesn't become a thing. I mean, obviously you didn't have social media to, to elevate it back then, but I think part of it is the moment like right now, but you know, all everybody's, everybody's feelings are being heard. Everybody's, everybody's hurt feelings are being tended to right now. Well, this is one of the reasons, but, but is it, is it a thing? Is well, it a thing? Well, this is this is one of the reasons why we're why the show is born in trouble because we're going to attack this from a different level. I actually was looking into that myself, and what I found interesting was that the Proud Boys they had raised at one point, I believe it was like a hundred um, million dollars for something, and it was um, the defense of of white of a um, white nationalist, and turns out that a large majority of that. About 86,000 was raised from the Asian community. So you have private citizens that are Asians that are supporting the Proud Boys and their message. Holy, 86,000 out of $100,000 was raised for the Proud Boys in the name of the Proud Boys by the Asian community. So one of the reasons why I want to bring this up is because One thing that I learned as a realtor and moving in Brooklyn in different areas is that Brooklyn is a very segregated place. You've got your Italian neighborhoods, you've got your Asian neighborhoods, you've got your black neighborhoods, you've got your Jewish neighborhood, and a lot of those neighborhoods butt up against each other. And where they butt up against each other and where those people come into contract contact, you see tension. This is just a natural thing. It's that's part of the whole makeup of New York City. 
but it's part right. of the makeup that nobody really wants to talk about. So in talking about this, you have people that have put $86,000 to support a racist ideology and a hate group well before any of this happened, well before any of this happened. And then it kind of puts in perspective. I am not saying that it's right that these people are up here, that there are a lot of like people in the city that are punching these people in the face, but it kind of gives you a perspective of what the tension between the communities and certain levels are. If you've been in a store, an Asian store and felt the eyes on you at a different point in time, then you know what I'm speaking about. I don't live in those neighborhoods. So it's like, to me, that really isn't a thing. My only interaction with somebody... Your what was that? I feel sorry for your mother. Yeah. Well, the only, like, the only, listen, the only person that, you know, I, the only Asian person that I ever met in the store and everything, I loved her to death. I used to come in, she'd have my sandwich ready for me. She's, she'd hide my apple turnover for me. Like, that's a good feeling. But most, but you have to recognize that just because that's my experience, that's not a lot of other people's experiences with that community. And it's borne out in dollars and cents when you get $86,000 donated from guys with names like Li Zheng and Ten Hao Zhu. And, you know, but, you know, maybe they're in those communities. Like $86,000 is a lot in that one particular example, but at the same point, it ain't nothing. Like that could be right. that six thousand dollars could be from one zip code. I mean, it could just be you know, it could it could just the three three guys who got Chinese food restaurants on the wrong side of the tracks. You know, almost one thousand people with Chinese surnames donated to this fund. The goal was a hundred thousand dollars for medical expenses, and eighty six thousand came from the Asian community. That's. That's hard yeah, to like ignore. You know, you can find 86 to who, are, who, are against, who are with the Republicans on this voting shit, too. Like, you know, 86,000 out of the Asian community. Ain't, you know, I ain't a tremendous numbers. In this. No, it's oh, my not. Name, we got that. No, it's not. It's not tremendous numbers. But if you put it in perspective, though, what I what I think that one of the reasons why that's a, why it's important is because it just goes to show you, like, there are a lot of people. There are a lot of like I have I have Asian friends. You know, I've got Jewish friends. Now, now, what would we say if somebody said, I have black friends? I have black friends. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, they won't, but they won't phrase it like, they won't discuss it like, they won't discuss it the way that I'm going, that I'm about to discuss it right now mm-hmm. and everything. And I also know Asian people that I can't fucking stand. And I know Jewish guys that I can't fucking stand. I don't not stand them because of their race. I don't stand them because they're fucking like assholes or something. This is proof that there are fucking a lot of assholes in the Asian community that are so fucking caught up in being assholes that they're willing to put eighty thousand dollars six thousand dollars out there. So it's sort of like, you know, um when we go into a room as black men, we're not gonna steal anything. You've got your wallet, you got your credit card, whatever. Or people are going to follow you and they're going to look at you in a certain way just because you are going into that space and that's what it is. Because we're being judged by other people. A lot of these people that are getting punched in the face are being judged by the actions of other people. People are human. Shit happens. So when are we as a society just going to get down to the point and just recognize that shit happens and not everything can be like put into a box and explained and not everything can be, not every wrong can be made right. And sometimes right is a little bit, it's obfuscated. You can't see it. You don't know what right is. That same person who donated that, you know, who donated a hundred dollars looks just like the same guy that's walking out in a black lives matter rally. That's my point. And saying that I have, you know, I don't give a fuck, but I do give, a, but I do give a fuck. And that's why I like, you know, I'm glad you brought that up Grant. Cause I thought that was a good, that was a good point. But did you know that? Well, I guess where I'm going is, 
how many how many Asians did it take? This sounds this sounds like a physical <laughs> like, like, like there's how no many way, Asians had there's to get no way to discuss this stuff. There's no way to discuss <laughs> I mean, it without it sounding wrong. So just like uh, just but I'm, it saying, out. I'm I'm just saying, how we many Asians say? had to get punched in the face before they passed this fucking law? Not that and many. Not, we, didn't, we didn't mention this at all with Dr. No, Lamar we did. And everything. No, we did, but we didn't get into it like oh, this. So okay. now, I thought I was no, stupid. no. But I no, I saw I saw the Dr. Umar though. Right. I saw yeah, the Dr. Umar. I couldn't get past the we've been <laughs> look, we ain't passed the bill for black people until over how many bit try right. he, said, he said he said it was over two hundred bills for uh for to make uh Crime against blacks, like hate crimes or some some shit. Right. But he said it was like two hundred bills, yeah. bills and none of them passed. But I'm just saying. Oh. I mean, my, I'm I'm a I'm a try to stay on point with this question. How many Asians had to get punched in the face before the fucking president determined that he needed to make a law making that it shit was, a hate crime? It was eleven thousand six hundred thirty-nine. I think the answer would be not enough. I think the answer would be how long. <laughs> I think the answer would be, well, how long did it take for them to raise the two hundred and fifty million to to put it in a to put in the lobby coffers? Well, we yeah, don't, yeah, we don't have absolutely. You know, everything in America comes back down to economics, and if we had a lobby that had two hundred and fifty million dollars to put out there every time, you better believe that there would be anti-black bills. But the system is set up so that way you don't even we can't even build the lobby properly. Without it being either messed up on one side or the other. So this is the reality. The world is run by money. So they went through there. We watched them go through a whole civil rights progression that we've been fighting for since 1950. After the Civil Rights Act was passed in in the 1960s and continues Mm -hmm. today with marching. Mm -hmm. And the difference is that they came in with. Two hundred and twenty five million right. dollars. They came, they came with their cash. They come with their cash. They come with their backup. And if you look at it like Joe Sy and everything for I'm a net fan, so I hope he doesn't take this wrong, but Joe Sy has close connections to communist China. A lot of his business is Alibaba, which is a large multinational corporation. It's the um Amazon of China, the Amazon of the rest right. of the world. And he makes a lot of money with those. So that money is in effect coming from the Chinese government. Who is Joe Tsai? He's the owner of the Nets. Oh. So that money is coming, and the richest, and the either the richest or the second richest owner in the NBA, and he gets all of his money and his products, and everything goes to Alibaba in China. So that money is essentially coming from the country of China. They're taking care of their own. What African country is going to send the money to the United States for a lobby? to stop these people from getting shot or do we even have that money is that money diverted to belgium diverted to france diverted to england diverted to all these different places you don't have the economic power to make the change our fight is different and our battle is different because our battle is not properly funded no i don't think it's a money issue if it was a money issue we'd be out of it already it's no. always a money issue. I disagree. I'm a, no, it's, politics, I mean, look, politics is a money issue. At the end of the day, <laughs> we're ranked lower. That's the bottom line. You know, uh, uh, because I just don't, you know, hold on. Did everybody finish watching Exterminate All the Brutes? Most definitely. Yes, they get to the end of it now. Yeah, I don't, yeah I you know, this is, this is, this is way deeper than just any one issue we could point out. Oh, absolutely. There's no doubt. You know, it's multi So, yeah, they came with that combination and everything else. But <clears throat> you mean in 200 years, everybody that walked up there broke talking about uh, passing a bill for uh, uh, a hate crime bill against blacks? I don't think so. No. I mean, I can't prove that, that they came with a lot of money, but I can't I also can't prove that they didn't come with no money. I just don't think it's a money issue uh, by itself. No, man, you know, it's... Listen, you watch Exterminate the Brutes and you you understand the history of this country and you understand the history of economics in this country. And part of the marginalization of black people in this country is not just a social one. It's an economic one. 
Whereas we're, whereas other people are able and allowed to invest in certain industries and in certain places and actually grow those things and develop their money, we've never been afforded that. Even something, even in the illegal part parts of the game, we've got billionaires that are listed on Forbes top five that are on Forbes top ten that are implicated in dealing drugs. Okay. Ooh. Not gonna. I don't have the list in front of me. We'll we'll have to cover that next time. But there are there are plenty of them that I'm sure they're tied up. They're tied up in different ways. Okay. Um. Before El Chapo went to jail, he was fucking up there, which is crazy. If you think about it, what black person in the United States has ever, or very few of them, we had we even talked about this on the show, even get a chance to like flip their money. We don't have any Kennedys. Our Kennedys die in the dirt. They don't get the opportunity to go out and buy Chappaquiddick and invest into legal businesses and continue to run. Those are the ones that the FBI was targeting, that the CIA was targeting to make sure that that money doesn't come in. So anytime you start building any type of business, and they still do it to this day, this playbook is like, as it's as clear as day. You know, you're an artist, you're um, Michael Jackson. He got smart. <laughs> he beat this. He beat them. He beat them. He bought cop. He bought publisher. No <laughs> he bought the publisher. He beat it. Right. He beat it for real. He was singing beat it, and he beat the <laughs> system. And then what they do? He's gone. He's out of there. And it's like, and it's not. These are the things. And and who's running? The thing is, who's running his finances? A conservative ship. Is that conservatorship in any, do you know who that conservatorship is? How much money do they put into the black community each year? Do you think Michael would be, you know, happy with what happened with his money after he was gone? They basically just took it back and they just sucked it back into the system. This is what the system, this is what the system does. Those, those Asian people, they have an, they have an advantage you know, and if we're going to talk about race, yes, they they were discriminated against, and they are, they are, they are lower than white people in this in this uh, racial hierarchy, but they've made money by being above us in this racial hierarchy, and the racial hierarchy has to go. So it ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Well, until until there's like uh, uh, who just said that they didn't believe anything could happen unless there's a lot of bloodshed. Like they just don't believe that it could get turned around without a lot of uh, bloodshed. I don't know where I just saw that at, but uh, but anyway, uh, 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 that's probably close to the truth. I mean. At the end of the day, man, you just can't deny true history. Shit, man. These guys have been willing to do anything and kill anybody and go to war and this and that shit. You, there ain't going to be no damn change. That, I mean, at the end of the day, I think this is what they're showing right now with the, you know, they're saying that the Republican Party is is being split in two, but the, the people, the Trumpsters, the ones who want to keep the rebel flags and stuff like that, that is the same energy that America has always had. That you know, we are willing to kill you to do to do it our way. At the you know, we, we, uh, shit. When it's all said and done, uh, if we can't do nothing else, it's gonna be guns versus guns. Us again. That is their mo. It always has been their mo. And when I say they, I'm not talking about all white people. I am talking about white people who have been in charge. Uh, American power structure for all these years. All right. So you know what to expect. There's no surprises, you know, the same way, like, you know, when I I come out and say this, there's no surprises to that. We already know what, what's going to happen. There's going to be a lot of doubling down at certain points on certain things. And that's like being borne out by these like laws that they're passing in Texas and Florida with the voter suppression and supporting the police and things of that nature. Those are the things that they're putting forth now. And even in places within those states, very interesting development within those states, they have these, um, they have these laws and some places where they're trying to defund the police, 
they're using something called state preemption to stop it. And what that is, is that law says that even though you have a sheriff, a mayor, um, local government in place, and these are the people that you voted for to represent you in your burg and how you're going to go about doing your business, state preemption means that the governor of that state ultimately gets to make the call. So if you want to take services from police and move them over to mental health professionals and develop a program for mental health professionals, if the governor in your state is, for example, Ron DeSantis, and I say for example because he's actually doing it, then they can go in and they can preempt your town and preempt your right to to enforce laws in that area and keep the status quo. And we all know that that's what it's about. It's about keeping the same people in power. Whether or not, I saw a very interesting quote today, whether or not people are successful, whether or not the police are successful with the funding, with um, with uh, stopping crime or deleting crime or reducing crime or whether or not crime is running rampant, police budgets stay the same. And when it's time to get an increase, they say that it in, that these things affect crime rates. Whenever they're not performing and the budgets are high, then they don't have anything to say about that. They say, well, you all know that police don't actually stop crime or affect crime whatsoever. And that's a big part of the status quo. People need to, maybe it's not going to change, Dean. You're probably right. It's not going to change. But you know what? I'm not about, I'm not necessarily about changing it. I'm really more about like pulling back the veil so that way people stop blowing smoke up my ass all day long. So the veil that I'm pulling back today on these people is a simple one. It's uh, basically if you're going to lie about the things that you do or lie about your importance and continue to take black men and create crimes in order to get them um, to stop them from voting like that police officer who was just recently fired in that town in Georgia got knocked for. If you're going to do that, then I want, I want it known that you're not really necessary. You're not really doing anything. You, you say that you're not doing anything. So why are we paying you? And what people don't need to realize is that you're not fighting against a system of oppression. You're fighting it against a job system because it's all about their money. It's all about their jobs. It's all about keeping their communities. Police officer doesn't really require much skills other than the willingness to shoot black people or to shoot other people. In many cases, not today. A lot of the crime is committed. Most people today, they tell on themselves. All you have to do is read the Facebook page, read the Twitter feeds. You can stop 60, 70 percent of the crime because criminals, if you thought if they thought they were lazy in the 50s and 60s, now they're just practically snoozing. And it's the same thing with perps. People are like they set themselves up. I was reading an article about Pop Smoke in L.A. He got he got knocked out in L.A. What was he doing? He put on Instagram the address of where he was staying all the cash that he had with him and the jewelry that it was worth. Shit, niggas going to come get you. Somebody's going to come get you. Why are people pretending that we live in a different world where criminal, hardcore criminals don't exist, hardcore police don't exist, um, and we're really just like, this, this money could be spent a better way. These things, the society that you're living in, you actually have a choice. You don't have to live this way. That's what I'm trying to get. That's my whole point. That's why I come on and I let people know. You know, you really do have a choice. This is a bunch of bullshit. Do you have a choice? Yeah, you do. Do you have a choice, though? Yeah, you do. You just have to fucking listen. What's all the these, choice? What's all the these, choice? All these. So, so I'm. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back to my example about the movie in time. The money, the, they know where the money is supposed to be. And I say they meaning the people in power. They know where the money is supposed to be. If you coming out of out of ghetto sector number one, <laughs> right? Think you're gonna think you're gonna matriculate into suburb sector number two, 
it ain't necessarily going to be able, you ain't going to be able to necessarily make that happen because there's so much shit in place to keep you in ghetto sector number one. Like preemption. Like state right, preemption. Like preemption. Like but, preemption. That's, but that's what I'm saying. So, so, so my, my point, my point is, it's not, it's not no, necessarily a choice. Because saying saying that it say, implying that it's a choice, saying this is that it's that it's simply a choice implies that people are choosing to do badly, and nobody would choose to do badly, or very few people would choose to do badly. In I'm, my opinion, I'm going to applaud you because that's going to allow me to segue the conversation into Cinco de Mayo, and the reason why I'm going to bring it into Cinco de Mayo is because now we're going to talk about immigration and people crossing the border illegally. Okay. Trump, his wall was gone. <laughs> they stopped the wall. No. That's a hell of a segue. Oh, yeah, it is a hell of a segue. This motherfucker I, didn't get, I, didn't, I didn't get it. I didn't get how they glued together. You're going to you're gonna have to listen and from, find out. From, yeah, from, it's, from it's a mystery. Sector number one to suburban sector number two. It's I a mystery. You. It's a I mystery. You, baby boy. Hey, here, here it goes. We're on a run. No, listen, we, we're running out here today. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> So here it is. So we're going to go to this. You said something very interesting in the last thing that you said. What did you say? You said that people don't have a choice in how they live. People have to go from ghetto sector number one to ghetto sector t- number two. You have to stay where you are and everything. This is what this is how it's set up. We've talked about this on the show before. Most of these people that are coming over from Central America, they're not coming over from necessarily Mexico. They're coming from Guatemala. They're coming from El Salvador. They're coming from all these different places where there are no jobs and everything. Right. So that's the reason why they're walking across the border. That's why they're trying to get to the United States of America. Once they get here, whether they plan on going on welfare and drinking all the tequila all day long, um, I don't know whether or not that's yeah, true. Yeah, sound like Donald Trump. Exactly. That's the whole point. That was That part was the joke. OK. <laughs> All right. So, you know, whether what they say they're going to do once they get here. But we never talk about the causal factors as to why they're leaving out of those areas. And they don't really have much of a choice unless they were to sit there, stay there, get together and fight against those people in their governments that are taking stuff for them from them and running their age areas the cartels and the, and all those other people. It's either that or sneak around the gate and bring, if you listen, the way I looked at it, I thought that single de Mayo is the best day for you to try to sneak in. If you bring some tequila with you, they might let you in. <laughs> Look, right. I'm going to tell you this, bro, this country may be glad I'm not a goddamn Mexican because I, I would, I would be worse. I would be worse than a descendant of a slave. Because you know, I'd be like, oh, what y'all talking about? Texas is Mexico. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, y'all criminals stole it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you, you know uh, uh, California, Mexico, California, and, as far as I'm concerned. Y'all stole that shit, too. <laughs> and there know? are a lot and of it, people that feel that way. It, you know, I'll te- I'll yeah. feel that way, okay. shit. They ought to, just like any Indian person, should, should, if, if you, if you, uh, 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 I don't want to call them the lopsided idiot. What'd you call them? A uh, uh, Rob Lop, Lop or something? Lenny, you, Lenny Lenapai. Lenny Lenapai. Lenapai yeah. Indian, okay? If you're Lenny Lenapai and you feel like, yo, you going to terrorize a geography because that's, you know, your geography. And I, when I say terrorize, you know, I'm not talking, whatever, killing people, scaring the shit out of people, whatever. If you're going to do that, yo, man, shit, man. Who am I? I think you have the right. Same as I think Mexicans have the right to cross that damn border anytime they want. <laughs> Do you? So, but but here's the problem though. After after America stole it, they had the wherewithal to create mm-hmm. documents to say that they actually owned it. Legally. And now yeah. and now through and now through government and everything like that, you can't you can't just say, okay, well, this is, this is still, you know, this is still Cherokee land right here. You can't, you can't just say that. No, you can't. I'm saying you can say that it'd be illegal, but you can say that. And I'm telling you that person doing that illegal shit 
would be understood by Gene Hopkins. That's all I'm saying. I, you know, oh, God, absolutely. You know, you know, I understand, <laughs> bro. And I'm not, I'm not calling you bad for it. I'm not bad. <laughs> Right. You might be one of my heroes. <laughs> well, you know what else, Grant? Another thing, another thing with what you said, as far as with the Lenny Lenape Indians, and there was another um, conversation, I believe it was in the state of Minnesota, about critical race theory being taught in schools to white kids. And it's just simply telling the story. So, you know, by your by your thing, what they would say is that the problem with teaching critical race theory the way things that the way that things actually happen is that if you teach that, then well, maybe the Mexicans do have a reason to walk into Texas. Absolutely. Well, well so they we, have a justification, maybe not a reason, but they'll have a justification. But I think they have that already anyway. Well, they're already working in Texas on um, passing a law that open carry is um, legal for everyone. Whether or not you, there's no more, no more licensing in Texas. Just go get you a gun. Go get I like you, that. You like that? I like so, that in this country. It's appropriate. Let the crazy. It's all appropriate. Be, it's appropriate, but it's still not a good thing. It's well, appropriate only because know, everybody thinks they're a cowboy. Good is subjective. So <laughs> right. yeah, it, it, it's appropriate to fit, you know, to fit the, what the rest of the world sees of us. Let but. me just tell you something. I know from from being uh, from from being trained with guns, most of most of the folks who want to carry open and this and that and buy guns, for lack of better descriptions, they're pussies. And everything is like they all got a plan, but till you hear some gunfire coming at your ass. You, I never worry about the thought. That life. They're I never, not about that life. So I'm not even, I'm not, my point is, I don't fear the person that's going out and buying guns. I fear the the racist, uh, militant person. I don't even fear him, to tell you what. I, 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 I recognize the racist, militant individual uh, as being. Uh, you know, uh, someone who could do damage. I'm with Rob on this one because I just don't want every dumbass to have a gun. And I, I understand exactly where you're coming from, Gene. No, I understand. Ex- no, I, I understand. Ex- no, I understand exactly where you're coming from. But something like that opens up the that opens up the light floodgates to everybody. It's too late. And then what happened? Listen, I don't live in Texas, so it's no, like I'm you know about in America, the amount of gun sales just. The last yeah, quarter I'm, alone, I'm, I'm not let even, alone the last fifty years, Grant, I'm not even, it's too late. Gene, I'm not even, but, a, yeah. I'm not even against that. You know what I'm saying? That's not what I'm saying. I'm against this. Everybody can have a gun for no reason, and you know, even with it is too late. There are too many people with guns and everything. But too many knuckleheads you know, with guns. Too many knuckleheads with guns. But I'm not walking around scared. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. That's Me not either. what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about is that. What I'm talking about is I I think what Rob is talking about is like kind of like the dumb person who's like, you know, you don't necessarily have to be scared. You don't necessarily have to be brave. You can just have a low IQ and you can just be carrying your gun in fucking Walmart and you take it out for some reason and you shoot somebody on accident. And then the other folks with guns ought to go ahead and shoot that ass on accident right yeah, there. But it's, no, no, I understand that. Too. But it's like it's, yeah. it's 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 all unnecessary. That's unnecessary. Wow. This evil ass country is appropriate. We ought to just be slinging shit. It, it ought to be the Wild West, and we'll see exactly, you know, how far it goes. If, if, if you know, because here's the thing: we're on the world stage. I want the most. I, I want it all to come out because the, you know, most of the well, much of the world is adopting truth faster than our citizens, and I'm talking about truth about our country. They've adopted it and learned it and everything else. It's our citizens, primarily probably the 70 million people who, who voted for Trump or some, some number around that, or, or that the carry that same energy of, nah, our head's in the sand. You know what I think uh, is funny? We're right and we right. You know what I think is... is... Our history is right. Nah, but it's not just that. You know what I think is funny? It's like, as soon as people started voting, when they reported the numbers about black people being up voting for Trump, as far as the number of black people... And I think even the percentage went up a little bit during this during the last one. 
I don't think that they realize people think that they voted for Trump because they like actually support him. A lot of those people voted for Trump because they want to really just click boom. You know what I'm saying? They want it. They feel the same way you just said. They're ready to oh. set it. <laughs> Yo, the funny thing is, is that the first term when when I first thought that he had a that, that he was resonating in his messaging at some at different points, Trump before he became a serious candidate, there was some of his messaging that was really resonating. Not with me, but I knew it would resonate with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And so I was like, wow, he might, you know what? They might, they might vote this fool in. So anyway, six years ago, well, five years ago, before I moved out here, I'm at a, a young white couple's house. Uh, uh, shit, I was selling them weed. Hell, it was in Atlanta, right? <laughs> and and, and uh, this was this was like a regular. And so I was over there and, uh, you know, they were like, when I say young, I'm talking like early 20s, you know, and I was late 40s and uh, they just got married, newlyweds and stuff. And the guy said, who you voting for? I had worked with him somewhere in cubicles. That's how I knew him. And I said, uh, you know, I gave him my spiel about how I feel about voting, but mm-hmm. we'll just park. We'll table that. And then uh, but I said, I'm hoping uh, Trump pulls it out. And I'm talking about, he was like, yeah, high fives and shit, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, whoa, I said, not for the same reasons you open no. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then him and his wife were like, what, you know? And, and, you know, I knew they were a bit stoned at that point. But what I explained to them was, well, what I'm hoping is, is that he just go ahead, it goes ahead and just, just speeds up the wheel a little bit or just speeds up the time a little bit. And uh, uh, it'll encourage uh, some unity where there has not been unity enough to this point. And you know, I'm talking in code to him, but you know, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you I know, know what you're like, saying. Uh, yeah, you're playing you know, chess. Black right. people are gonna have to unite because they're gonna know they're gonna get their head out. I thought he was gonna cause black people to get their head out of the sand. You know, uh, you know, if he's voted, I think this is a good chance, and then you know, it'll bring on you know, my version of the revolution, which isn't guns. They could, they we're outgunned, period. They, they right. push buttons and fuck. But revolution of the mind, you know, like some kid invent or, you know, uh, in, a, in his innovation, come up with a way to, to rock, to, to take electronic funds from them and disperse it amongst black people or something. I know it's a crazy thought, but, you know, anything's possible and, and, and there's a thousand other things that, that can happen that don't require, you know, some level of violence or something. I don't and think so, that I don't think that Trump not getting elected um has killed that pathway, especially with black people. Man, I'm gonna tell you I don't know. I don't well, I'm, I, a, I'm a little disappointed uh because uh, shit, man, you know, a hell of a thing has been done to us, man. You know, uh uh you know, yeah, I like to, and and you know, on my soapbox, wish that everybody would just wake the fuck up, and you know, and and say, you know what, we're refusing to buy anything except for black. We're refusing this and that, and we we about to tighten up and and uh, and and you know, get through this or or uh, excel in this thing like they did on Black Wall Street because this is a different day. Maybe they can't squash it like they did Black Wall Street or something. See, but that can happen. That can happen overnight if everybody made a, a disciplined decision to get it done. And I was thinking that if Trump got voted in, it was going, it was going to drive pe- people to that point. And all I saw was it drove people to Jesus, man. And it made me mad because, you know, it was like, damn, not that way, folks. Not that way, you know what I mean? <laughs> See what it is? <laughs> they was, was hurting on in there. What it, you know is, what, is, what it is, Gene, is that you they do have... Pray that shit away. You do I'm have optimism. But you do have optimism. You do have optimism. optimism you just don't like to express it. I have love. But I you know what? Optimism because but you I know what? Love. You can't give up your optimism just because Trump didn't I get haven't. elected. I haven't. You I'm sound like my brother now. Right now, you sound I'm like my brother now. You can't, you do, you can't, like, just because yeah. Trump didn't your get elected. Be- your brother is the better brother, then, he's a better brother. <laughs> he is, he, he definitely is. He's, he's like, we work it, we work he's it through. He's higher it. in the gene pool than you. We work it, we work <laughs> it through. So, so, no, I no, mean. No, I understand. What, I understand what you're I saying. I thought Jeremy. Trump would do that because yeah, he was but, that ridiculous. But you can't. But you but can't say that. Didn't. But I see uh, a lot of things that are still moving. 
I still think I still see things that are, and this is a pandemic. Like people need to realize that if there's any cha- if there's ever a time that things are going to get changed and that people can actually affect change, it's still now. You know, there's nah, this world now. is not like not listen. Now. They're making listen, it rain. You can't even. Rain. You can't even. Well, <laughs> that's part of the problem. Nothing. No, but, but that's no, but that's part that of the problem because you've got people that are you have people that are literally being called back to work and saying, "Nah, I'm not going." There's no reason. I ain't for mad at either. That. Yeah, but listen. Right. <laughs> but no, but that's one change though. But that's one uh, change. So it's like temporary. there's a, it's, no. Temporary. But you see, listen. You can't be out. You can't like hope for hope for things or want things or when I plan to have things. And then when things happen, say, ah, well, that shit ain't going to work because you got to listen. It's not as it's not everything that we're going through right now is temporary. Everything that we're going through right now is new. Herd immunity, vaccine, um, work from home. Don't go parties. Don't go clubs. Yeah, Nets uh, winning. Yeah, but you know what? Nets gonna keep winning. Nets winning. You hit all you want. The Knicks winning is like that. Shit is like more like that's the crazy shit. You know, so, Knicks so haven't been we, in the playoffs since. Are, Woo. are we resigned to the fact that this is that? So what? If, what if this is? What if this is the 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 norm moving forward? You understand? It ain't it ain't no guarantee that shit is gonna go back to normal. Like if anything, if what anything has happened with people. Well, what what we what we were accustomed to pre pre COVID pre COVID nineteen. Yeah. So right. so there's no guarantee that shit is going to go back to that. So people who are who are working from home, what this has done is there, there's a lot of opportunity in what's in what's happened with the country. So like all Correct. these, let's take let's take a uh, University of Michigan since I'm in since I'm in Michigan. University of Michigan is is starting to understand that they don't need all these fucking buildings. Okay. Right? Right. Microsoft, you know, all these different companies, they're discovering that they don't need all this motherfucking all these buildings and all this real estate and all this all these employees that ain't really doing shit because now a lot of shit is being exposed as to who was really doing some work and who was just getting a check. Getting coffee every five minutes. Right. Correct. So, so a lot of shit is getting exposed. So, so what I'm a, what I'm gonna propose is that if you one of them people that's been getting uh, free money from the government, you know, if that's what you've been doing, I hope that rather than going to fucking Dubai and doing stupid shit with that money, buying up the the latest Jordans or whatever the fuck, I hope you were doing some shit to further your own cause, mm-hmm. starting your own business. Mm-hmm. I mean, doing doing some shit for your for your children. I I hope that that's what you've been doing with this money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna tell you something. It's, I, I I talked to my brother Nairiri Richmond, uh, and, and Nairiri, we we share the same sentiment. Yo, I don't even know what it's gonna look like when the day comes where people start getting good and broke that ain't been broke for years. Well, that's- or you know, ain't never been broke. Uh, but that's that's gonna be the vacuum. Well, that's, that's what's lot- gonna. I mean, this is creating this is creating a vacuum that hasn't happened yet. There is actually a, there's because actually you got to of- keep still giving the money, or or the rubbers go meet the road, and and and, and I don't there even understand actually- what it's gonna look like when, there- when people get good and broke. There's actually a lot of there's actually a lot of leeway. There's actually a lot of opportunity. Just like in any time when there's upheaval in this country, it's like in any country, you know, anytime most fortunes are made at times of distress, when things hit low, somebody comes up with an idea and boop, next thing you know, you're all the way up there or those things or things have changed. Everything that we've talked about today is like, you know, Grant, you don't believe it's going to go back to the way it is. So what does it look like? It will. It's evolved. It no. has evolved. Has it evolved? But it's not yes. it's not finished though. What has it evolved into? It's still evolving. No. Yes. Exactly. It has, that it, is my it, point. It evolved, but what but that is, is exactly my point. But that is yeah. exactly my point. It's evolving. When I'm when I'm saying all these different things, when you're saying like, well, this Trump and the presidents and fucking Biden and all these other guys, they have really little to do with this shit. You know, this that shit this shit has been out of their hands for quite a while. And, and that's the God's honest truth. Trump, he's getting credit for a vaccine 
that all he did to do was fucking get in the way of the people who were trying to get in. He people are trying to say that Trump is supposed to that like you know maybe this vaccine should be called the Trump vaccine. Yeah, and those fuck, people those people are named Trump. Don't listen those to people those. Are named those Trump. Are those people are made. Yeah. yeah, those are Trumpsters. But no, but listen, that's half of the fucking. That's half of that's that side. That's that side, and they're trying to keep it that side. Okay. But these people are saying they have this thought process, but he didn't have anything to do with it. And guess what? They made the vaccine anyway, and people are taking it, and the numbers are down in some areas, whatever. I still ain't take that shit, but, you know, and I know they, they killed another guy for saying that, but it's like, still, I mean, we could get into that at another time as far as, like, why and how people are now getting bullied into getting this, getting a vaccine or the thought process and how they're making it so that if you want to do certain things, you're going to have to take that vaccine. And that's fine. That's part of the change as well. So there's going to be this financial opportunity in that there's financial opportunity in a lot of different ways. And in many different things, it doesn't really matter what race you are because a lot of the shit is being done from home. So if you come up with the system or you come up with things and you have the opportunity to get them financed now because everybody does, because you can get PPP or PPE or whatever and everything. There is a lot of opportunity out there to change things. There's a lot of opportunity. We talked about just the things that we talked about on the show, what Grant does with this daughter, with changing that with the learning pod and with a lot of the homeschooling stuff and a lot of the changes in the schooling and people recognizing that the old systems aren't, aren't working as much for the kids. And you see people that are that have shifted their children into different learning modes and different learning pods and everything. Um, coding, things of that nature for kids. There is an, there is opportunity out there. So I don't think that it's necessarily because Trump like lost now people aren't going to, those dumbasses, they're, they're in the process right now of trying to kill themselves. They're, you've got one half of the Republicans, or not even one half, you've got like three quarters of the Republicans saying that this is the party of Trump. And then you've got the other quarter saying that we're actually still conservatives. We're old fashioned, mm-hmm. you know, white racist guys, or just, or just like, or just white supremacy, we'll just say. It doesn't really come with the racism, it's just the supremacy. And it's just the system. It's the way it is for them. But the other ones are, they're still in there. They're still mixed up in the game and they're trying to make things happen in that way. But they're eating each other up. And I understand what we what we say about these systems, but the numbers aren't in their favor. You know, even if you, you they're going to have to continue to do these things and be even more out with, out more forward with them. More veils are going to have to be pulled back because the numbers aren't in their favor. They're not, you know, you don't, they don't talk about the declining birth rates anymore. All they talk about is the voter suppression. They don't talk about how people just don't believe in their ideas anymore. They talk about how Trump should be, or this one should be running things. They've given up the mantle of democracy. So it's like they've even abandoned the position of even looking like we want fair or we want equal. And they've gone full fascist. Because that's what you are when you say that I want to. I will only follow one leader and what he is doing and what he says. That's full fascism. So those people have gone full fascism, and if you can't see that they're not that, some of them might actually lose their positions. They're they're taking a gamble. Everything is up in the air right now. If they lose the war, even if they win the battle. If they lose the war, it's going to be a different world. Forget about country; it's going to be a different world. And that's what I'm. That's what I'm hanging in here looking at. I'm waiting to see that. I'm waiting to see all this shit. I don't necessarily believe that you're wrong. The only thing I believe that you're wrong about is that um, saying that anything is definite, or that it's going to happen, or it's not going to happen. I think that we're at a change. I think we're at a crossroads in this world. I really do. And I think that we're going to see it. It's going to emerge a different world. And I'm an older person. So it's like in 20 years, I probably got 20 more years left. You know, tops, like, you know, full speed. You know, that's that gets you underneath. You're, you would still be below the 
the the um the mean age that people live to. No, I, I, I I'm not talking about dying. I'm talking about like continuing to be fucking, you know, viral and fucking punching motherfucking shit. I'm not fucking. I'm not. Nah, I don't yeah, you feel got 50. twenty, dog. I don't feel. So you talking about punching people at seventy? See, this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm you saying. You don't people believe it. At 70, I'm talking about. 20. Listen, punches are metaphorical. Sometimes it's physical. Sometimes it's metaphorical. Oh, okay. But you're still fighting. You understand what I'm saying? You know, still being, still being in this game, still fighting in this shit to the grave, baby. To, to the, the grave. grave. That's correct. That's so, what I got. But no matter shit how is long changing. Is, I'm fighting to the grave. Shit is I'm changing. Yeah, the motherfuckers with a cane and a wheelchair, or some shit. Be, you better stay light on your feet. Better stay light on your feet. Better stay light on your feet. Like yo, I'm grandsons. I see grandsons of those soldiers. Right, Rob, you've been awful quiet this show though. You you barely even talk. Hey, hold on, hold on. So that's that's because of you, X. Because you went to Grant first, and you asked him a question about the week. And you veered off down the street, round the block, and a couple miles away, and we never even got to the other people and what happened this week. I wanted to give some shit up. One time we we talked about Grant brought up uh, the colleges. Damn it, Gene! Uh, you know, you talk so goddamn this, much. You could have just brought it up. <laughs> you could have just brought it up. Trying to squeeze in, man. Just every, squeeze it in. Just say every, it, bro. Every, every, just just every say it. Every time I thought, every say time it, I thought I would hear. Period, I'm sorry, man. It I'm wasn't. sorry. It was just a comment. I'm I sorry, man. I'm, I'm sorry. Listen. I'm sorry. So listen. I'm sorry. And Grant said, Grant. They didn't let they didn't draft one dude from H, uh, one athlete from uh, a football player from an HBCU. And remember, you posed the question, of, uh, you know, uh, about yeah. you know, your friend and stuff. We can go that back. Was, you know, I, I'm not I'm not sit, implying anything except for the they connect the the, the the subject matters connect. But I thought it was interesting this week when uh, you know when they pointed that out, <clears throat> and then uh, of course Dion. You know, made a comment about it and everything, but uh, oh, you know, yeah, he's probably man. taking it personal. Like, yo, they're yeah, they trying to mess up my no recruiting. Talent? They didn't find no football talent at HBCU. Well, the other, well, this, the other, the other coach rare. went for him too. You saw yeah, that. It's, it's rare that they draft. It's rare that they draft talent from HBCUs. I mean, they they are they get generally will get drafted in the later rounds. Mm-hmm. But I think I think this year, um, all that got all. Like all that was hindered, but due to due to the coronavirus and all of that, so I think they just kind of stuck with the bigger schools, the names that they kind of you know the name that you know, you feel me? Like the the Alabamas, the Oklahomas, whatever. Well, you know, I think they just stuck to those schools. I mean, it, there's there's always talent at HBCUs, but it's just do do they want to go that far? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, so the the interesting thing to me about the draft was the fact that. If you looked at in, if you looked at any of the draft and and you saw the draft rooms, the draft rooms was a motherfucking good old boy network. Mm. It's you know if it's thirty two teams, let's let's call it five people in each room. Each room probably had a quarter of a of a black person. Mm. So to me, to me, that's the that's the interesting shit. You know what I'm saying? Like not not where the players come from. Because the play, the players are, the players are just gonna play. You know what I'm saying? But it, as long as you're kept out of the administrative part of it, the ownership part of it, there'll never be any true representation of black people anywhere other than on the field. I think Dion's take has been very interesting with the other coaches, um, especially the one who came for him on Twitter, um, said that. You know who's more who was more interested in the fact that Dion was outshining him, or was like still getting publicity. And Dion is like, "Look, I'm not here for that. I'm here to bring all of us together. And the only way we get more people in that room is if something that like what Dion Sanders is trying to do with HBCUs actually is effective. So people need to get behind this brother." And get with him. He's not even trying to. Work. He doesn't. It doesn't seem to me like he's even trying to step out in front of you. He's trying to work with you. So why don't you work with this man so that way what you're saying, Grant, does doesn't become a, a reality. You know, where's Doug Williams right now? 
Yeah, I don't he, know, man. I mean, I'm not convinced that Dion is. He works I somewhere. I'm not convinced Dion is 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 you know genuine, a genuine activist. You know, in in the context that he's positioning himself to be uh, a liaison for young black people, I'm not convinced because of a resume or uh, well, just the resume I've seen. And I'm not convinced, man. You know, just I'm telling you, I played in a basketball game with Deion Sanders. <laughs> this motherfucker, man, he came up to us. You know, I was young. You know, he was on a whole, you know, he, he had a whole bunch of pros with him. Uh, who was all there? Jeff Blake, Jason Kidd, some other NBA players. And they were playing the munis- you know, the municipal workers along with uh uh who else? I don't know. Teachers or whatever. But it was a bunch of us, right? And our, our bench was like 19 people deep. I'm talking about, you know, everybody wanted to play with the stars. This motherfucker came over there talking about something. Look, I know we all great in our own mind. <laughs> but, but these are pro, but we're pro athletes, so don't undercut nobody if they try to dunk this, that, and everything else. And he said, have fun and dart it off. Jerry Carroll's and all. Jerry Carroll's exactly. and all. And I said, he said, protect the money. I got yeah. it. Yeah. No, nah, because I I was hoping when I'm trying to dunk on me. And I did get dunked on, as a matter of fact. Yeah, oh, I'm fucking, sure you did. Uh, 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 <laughs> Offensive lineman for the Cowboys. I forgot this dude name, too, man. I never saw it coming. I thought I was blocking the shit. Shit, that dude punched it, man. I'm saying, yeah. So, so you, Yo. so basically, you saying you mad at Dion because this team whooped no. your ass? Okay, got no, I mean, listen, I'm telling you, I've only seen arrogance from him, and I've only seen. But, uh, but was you know, that arrogant though? That's not arrogant. You know, that's yeah, protecting that the bag, bro. Man, fuck you, man. That's protecting the bag. Goddamn game. You know, that's what, that's he, knows, he knows there's some motherfucker like you trying to prove a point. And no, shit like, God damn it, ain't nobody bumping on me today. He's no, protecting the bag, right. bro. He's protecting right. the bag. I was a mild one. I was a mild one. But no, yeah, I mean, I, they was damn near jumping from the free throw dunking on us. I got, time I don't undercut, and the crowd was going, ooh. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. I got my you, own. That's, how was good. that's what you signed up for. I got my own Dion. I got my own Dion Sanders story. I also met Dion once at the Apollo. After oh, yeah. a show. After a show with like you know Craig, Craig and Biggie and Patra, and um, a couple of other people were on the were on the bill. I remember back in the day. That's when she was hot, and we were getting ready to leave. And the um, the uh, dressing rooms were up the stairs, and we were coming down the stairs. And Craig had already went down the stairs, and here comes Dion. No, me and Craig were walking down the stairs, and here comes Dion. Hey, what's up? What's going on? Fur coat? You know what I'm saying? Had the nice jewelry on and everything to D. He's like, yo, what you do? He's like, oh, Deion Sanders, what's up? It's like, oh, yeah, I'm just trying to see what the boys is doing, what the real players is doing right now. Everybody else on there, I want to know what the real players are doing. Where are we going hanging out afterwards? And Craig is like, huh? Oh, I'm getting ready to go back to the hotel, bro. <laughs> He's like, where the hoes at? Deion's like, where the hoes at? We got to get some hoes tonight. Something like that. And that was my Deion story. So he didn't dunk on me, but we also he didn't, didn't get no hoes together. Either, God damn it. I didn't say Dion dunked on me. He, dunk, he was all American in basketball. That dude was good. Yeah. I mean, you know, he yeah, no, you know, yeah. could play ball. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, like, ha. Hey, ha. Yeah. ha. Let it go, man. Let it go. <laughs> Let it go, bro. Must be the money. Just <laughs> yeah. turning you know, what? On. This is this is this, this Yo, is one of those times where a therapist would be really good, man. You got jazz foot, bro. It's all right. <laughs> you got jazz foot, bro. It's all right. It's okay, man. It's okay. It's all right. I mean, at least you got jazz foot by a professional athlete. Oh yeah, man. They they ran, they, man. They ran the score up on us. And we, I'm telling you, man. We had 20 That's people, you- man. We had. We That's because you're trying to block the dunks. Man, wanting to get in just for a Photoshop, you know. It's like, man, come on, man. Why are you on the bench? You know what I'm saying? You know, take yeah, Gene, Gene out here trying to win. He's trying to win. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, you better hope this. Right. You better hope they have no video of yeah. you know that. We can say we beat them, motherfuckers. <laughs> and he then saw, you woke up. He saw Jason. He saw Jason and Jeff Blake and was like, yeah, I can win. 
They used to, they was asking me for my autograph. They he wasn't was young enough. Kid. They thought I was Jason Kidd. I'm gonna, I was I'm, like, who? I'm gonna get you know, yeah, just came into the league and I was like, who? I used to get Dave Justice a lot, uh, you know, when I was young. I'm telling you, man, people asked me for my autograph, thought I was Dave Justice. I didn't even know who he was. I had to look him up. That, you know, that must have that. worked out for you in the club. Exactly. You know? It no, I didn't have for you. club years. I was married. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. So, fellas, man, it's been over an hour already. Time flies yeah. when you're having puns. When you're having what? What? <laughs> From California, so Gene Hopkins. Hey, hey. Like, this brother's just in a weird mood today. <laughs> Detroit, yeah, is, man. Grant Lancaster. This guy's got that That's right. It's kicking in. Come to City Wing, 2896 West. That's right. And from Philadelphia, Mr. Robert Brooks. Aloha, good people. Mr. Robert Brooks. <laughs> Mr. Robert Brooks. No, man, I thought y'all I thought y'all were gonna come for me. That's all. I, I was just a little bit tight. That's all. I just thought y'all were coming for me. So yeah, why? Because I don't about drink tequila though. anymore. You, just because yeah, I don't drink uh, tequila anymore. I mean, I mean you act like you act like, 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 like them cats that I see, man, that do bumps, man. Nah, man, we ain't. <laughs> <laughs> and, what, uh, <laughs> and you didn't do like any of it. You didn't like you had all this killer like Cinco de Mayo stuff. You left all that behind. Like you just the bad. I, I can't. Like I was telling, I was telling Grant before the show. It's like you know, it's got to be in the moment, P. It's like I had a lot of Cinco de Mayo jokes and I was ready, but it's like. It's not but now it's the Seis de Mayo. It's Seis de Mayo. It's not the same thing, man. But you know what, though? I feel like I didn't see the same volume of Cinco de Mayo. Love? Drunkenness. Yeah, like it wasn't, you know, just didn't see that same level of activity. Like I didn't see a lot. I didn't see as many people, I feel like, posting their 11 a.m. margaritas because it was. Because they Cinco stopped the building the wall and they're sad. <laughs> I don't know what Grant's saying back there in the kitchen. Yeah, he said, "Cause they yeah. what? Because they he didn't get tacos the from Mayo. They, yeah, because so Cinco de Mayo didn't make it there. Yeah, that's true. Oh, yeah. yeah, people still getting fucked up. People still just got money and they just chilling and everything. And like you know, it's the last couple. Like Gene said, they they're getting their they're getting their notices to come back to work, and that's making them drink even more. You know, so I'm mad at them, man. I'm telling you, man. What, I'm not mad at them. We're not we're not supposed to go to anybody's fucking office all day, every day, or a garage or whatever. We're not supposed to be doing that shit, man. I can agree. I unless think- it unless it helps the planet or the world somehow, we're not supposed to be doing that shit for the sake of capitalism. Calling and lying to folks all day. Lying with your white voice. Hey, y'all see that movie <laughs> with Danny Glover in uh, uh Sorry to Bother You. Know? Sorry to Bother You. Oh my I love God. that movie. I screaming. I grew I'm telling you, man, I worked in those atmospheres for more years than I can remember, man. Well, That's you know, I'm true. you know, I just have the white voice. <laughs> like, <I just> <laughs> yeah, you can do it. Yeah, you can't you can't you get away with it. Like, you, you probably know. can go oh, I'm Robert Brooks. No, you're not to newscasts. So, so let me let me tell you this. On the episode that Rob said, we were talking about somehow Eric Badu song had came up, and Rob said, uh, "Called what? What did you say? Called Jerome or something? Yeah, yeah. called Jerome, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Jerome. Yeah. The chick in my office was like, "Is that a white boy?" <laughs> I, was like, I, was like, I was like, "Nah." I was like, "Nah." I'm not a white boy <laughs> at all. He's like my brothers. I was talking to someone about the show today, and they were like, you know, I was like, and you know, this is the mix. We got we got Gene, we got we got Grant, and we got Rob. He's the most calm one out of all of us. He was like, oh, y'all are fucked then. Right, right. So y'all are fucked up then. Oh, like, he knows oh. Rob. Yeah, huh? no, yeah, 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 yeah. He was like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we fucked up then. You know, so yeah. If you, if you know this, no one improved, Rob. That or last, I shouldn't say no one improved. I'm say Rob twenty the the 2020 version, 2021 version. No, 20 years. Um, 2021. That's it. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's it's a different album. I gotta tell you, man. <laughs> the last, like this episode wasn't as funny, but that last episode that we had, like that last week, man. Oh my god, it was like, oh, y'all had no chill. 
It's like he had no chill. It was like oh, that shit was hilarious, bro. That shit was hilarious. There was no I chill. Listen, I got to listen to it. I got to listen to oh it. Oh my god! Yeah. Oh, it's all awesome. Huh? It's all awesome. Uh, so it's, all awesome. it's on Audible. Yeah, yeah. it's on Audible yeah. now. Yeah. I got yep. Yep. So yeah, we're moving on up. Moving on up. Are we still in the show, or have we ended the show? I haven't stopped the show yet. I'm okay. still recording. Just, I'm just checking. Okay. Well, no, oh, this is the extra. This is a YouTube this is the extra. extra. Nah, this is the look, extra. I, I say we can go to, like, you know, I like to keep it to, to an hour, but hour 15 is the most. So it's like, if we're still, if, you know, we're still vibing, we're still talking, I'll, I'll let it run. You know, that was kind of a heavy episode anyway. I hope yeah, the ninjas uh, yeah. don't come jumping through my window tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man, because, yeah, man, you know, yeah, because you, you, you was rough, you was rough on our Asiatic brothers. Yeah, you know. Just keeping it, no, listen, just keeping it real, man. We all, it's balanced, man. It's like, this, this happens in every man. neighborhood. I don't, I don't, I don't understand no Asian hate. I'm telling you. Only Bruh. time I ever had a problem with an Asian person. Is when she was acting like she didn't know why I came in there. But yeah, Come but on. you know what? But you didn't you know live... she... No, nah, but you know like what the thing is. I'm saying. But you know what the thing is. Like, no, but you know what the thing is. I didn't realize. I didn't realize. Like, I didn't realize it was like that between. <laughs> I didn't realize it was like that between the Caribbeans and the, and the Jewish neighborhood in Brooklyn the until. No, I'm telling you, like I'm telling you straight up. I did not realize. No, let me speak, Gene, please. I did not realize it was like that bad between the two of them until I actually went into that neighborhood. And then I seen like, you know, and I actually talked to the people and I sat down with the Caribbeans and they would say one thing. And then I speak to the Jewish people and they would say different things. And they just like really like hated each other and everything. And a lot of them like each other. But a lot of them, like, you know, they really, like, hated each other. And that kind of shocked me that, like, you know, neighborhoods, like, people, like, really hate. Like, you know, these that people shocked have you really... in America. That shocked you, huh? Yeah, it kind of, it, you know, listen, when you, it's one thing to know it exists, to know it exists. It's another thing to hear it and to see it at that level where, you know, like you, like, you know, most people saw that, that person getting kicked in the face and they were, like, shocked by it. Because I had my experiences talking to these people in these neighborhoods, I wasn't as shocked by it because of that. You know, to me, it was like, damn, it's like, you know, these people are taking out the same frustrations. The same way I heard, you know, people hear stuff at their kitchen tables, I was hearing it at these people's kitchen table. So it's like, I know where it's coming from. And then at the same time, they get, they're get they mad at it, but look at what happens. They put $225 million into into Washington, and they got a bill. So there's levels to this shit. That's all I'm saying. It's, I don't know what's the motherfucking. Happened. It's the motherfucking <laughs> monkey. But it's the monkey and banana experiment, dude. So uh, you, y'all y'all familiar with it? The monkey uh, and the banana. There's this there's this experiment where you like you put a you put a monkey in a put a monkey in a cage and put an elevated <laughs> banana and you gotta climb up the ladder to get it. And he climbs up the ladder to try to get it. Um. Like you put two monkeys in there, so one that climbs up the ladder to get it, the other one gets like shocked or some shit, mm-hmm. right? So, so when when eventually when the when the monkey sees the one the other monkey trying to climb up to get the banana, he beats the shit out of him. Yeah, right. <laughs> I've heard so about that he, so that he don't get about. shocked. Yeah, now you, I know, heard you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. So then they bring another monkey in, and that monkey tries to go up, and then the two monkeys beat the shit out of this other monkey. So eventually they eventually you get rid of the monkey that knew what the fuck they was beating the shit out of each other for. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And then all the monkeys that are left are just left to beat the shit out of each other without even knowing why. Mm-hmm. This is where we are. Yeah. We just we just beating the shit out of each other and we don't know why. And on that note, I'm going to end the episode. Born in Trouble, see y'all next week. Yeah, that's a fucked up note to end the episode. <laughs> <laughs>